All right, so if it has our found names, then let's create a function that's going to basically display whether the name is found or not, right? So I'm going to create a function, and I'm going to call it print. Uh, let's call it print search results, I guess. So search result, we need to, again, de determine if this function is going to accept any arguments. Search result is going to go through all the found names, and it's going to take the user search names, Go is going to go through all the user search names. Each time it's going to compare a name. It's going to basically check to see if that name, that, uh, that particular name it's on in the user search name list, if it's in the found names. And if it's in found names, then it's going to display that name was found. If it's not in found names, it's going to say that name was not found. So it's going to need the user search names list, first of all. I'm going to create a parameter for it. Again, it doesn't have to, you know, that this, these names can be, can be the same. Um, they're not, they, they, you know, they don't see each other, okay? They don't see each other. They are in two different functions, and so they are considered different. All right, so user search names list is going to need that, and it also, it's also going to need uh, a found names, uh, or a, a list containing the found names. I'm going to define a parameter. I'm going to call it the same name called found names. All right, so it's going to be the same approach as this, right? Same loop structure. So for user search user search names uh, list index because we're going through the user search names and the index is going to represent the element in the user search names list. So for user search names index in range same as what we did up here. We're going to create a range all the way from zero all the way to the length of the user search names here. User search names. But we know if the search names contains 10 elements, then the length will be 10. Range 10 will create a range from 0 through 9. These 0 through 9 numbers will be assigned to this user search names list index as the loop is iterating from 0 all the way to 9. <coughs> I'm going to iterate 10 times all right. This is assuming that a user search names contains 10 elements. All right. So same idea. Each time we want to check to see if this part the particular name we are on in the loop is in found names. So if at any point the particular name we are on in this user search names list, the particular element with this index, if at any point in time that value is in the found names list, then actually what we want to do is print out the message saying that this particular name here was found. So I'm passing that value as one argument. The next argument is going to be was found. Else, then we want to print out a different message. Okay. We want to print out, print out a different message saying this particular name here was not found. <clears throat> so I can see I'm exceeding this line again. Over here, I just touched it. I'm exceeding this line again, so I'm going to break it into two. So let's start with this. I'm going to break it somewhere around here. Before you break a line, you type in the backslash, hit enter. Over here as well, I want to break it somewhere around here. Before you break a line, you type in the backslash, hit enter. So it doesn't affect its functionality. It's just for a visual. Uh, visual um, uh, it's just a visual. All right, so we have, I think, all our functions. We've already created our main function you know, for, for the testing purposes. All right, so we, we created over here the girl's file name. Um, and we call the read girls names from file to list function. We provided a girls file name, and then we got all the names of the girls in the list. Now let's let's do the same thing for the boys. Let's call read boys names from file to list. Let's call that function. I'm going to space this out just so it's readable. So I'm going to call read boys names from file to list. We know this function. Okay, read boys names from file to list takes in a file name and this file name is going to be the file name of the boys uh, file which is boys names or txt and so boys uh, oops let's call it well let's call it yeah <laughs> boys file name is going to be equal to boys names dot txt And then 
we know this function needs a file name. We know this read boys names from file to list function needs a file name. And so I'm going to pass in this boys file name function to it. We know the read boys name from file to list function returns the boys names list, a list containing all the boys names. And so when it's returning it, we need a place to store it, just like this, just like the girls names list. So I'm going to create a variable called boys names list as well for the boys. Okay, so we have the girls names list, we have the boys names list. The new line will be stripped. We did that already in the, in the two functions. We stripped out the new lines. <coughs> Sorry about that. And then what's next? So the next thing we do is we want to get the search names from the user. We have a function for that. This function is get user search names. I'm going to call that function get user search names. Get user search names doesn't accept any argument, so we don't have to pass any, any argument. It doesn't have any parameters defined. And then it's going to return a list containing all the user search names. And so when it's returning it, we need a place to call uh, to store it. I'm going to basically call it the same name, user search names. Doesn't matter again. The scope of this variable that I just pasted here, which is user search names list, is within the main function and the scope of this user search names list is within the uh, get user search names function. They don't see each other at all. All right, so we have, we'll have the user search names here. And then now we can go ahead and search for the names. We have a function for that, which is search for names. Right under this, I'm going to call that function. This function first needs the user search names list, which we have here. So I'm going to pass that to this function. The next thing it needs is all names, or basically all name, all names list, I guess. All right, so we have the girls' names list. We have the boys' names list. We can merge those two lists into one. Uh, sorry again, I keep on being interrupted. <laughs> not, not interrupted in a bad way, but uh, someone tried to open the door uh, where I am. Okay, so I was saying, um, so we call the search for names function, which needs the user search names list, and it also needs the all names list. And so we have two, two, the two lists here, we can merge them. We can actually merge two, these two lists into one uh, using the concatenation, using the plus sign. And so I'm going to create right, right below those two lists. I'm going to create a, let's, let's first go ahead and merge them. Let's merge them. We have girls names list. So I'm going to take the girls names list and I'm going to concatenate. I'm, I'm using the plus sign to concatenate the girls names list with the boys names list. And this is basically going to merge those two lists into one, into one list. It's going to, the result is going to be that. And so I want to store the result in, a, in another list called all names list. So we'll have all the, all the names stored in one list here, which is convenient so because now we know that the search for names function needs the all names list as well. Again, it doesn't matter if the, the names are the same. We have it here, so we can pass this all names list to it. And we know the search for names function returns a list, okay, containing our found, our found names, okay? I should have called this found names list, but it's okay. Uh, a list containing our found names. So if it's returning it, we need a place to store it. Not over here, I'm actually going to call it found names list, just so it's clear. So in the main function, it's called found names list. All right. But in this function, it was found names. It doesn't matter. It's returning a list anyway, so I'm storing it here in found names list. And once we have the found names list, we can call our print search results function. The print search results function is going to take, we know over here that it needs the user search names list, which we have here. I'm going to pass it in here. And it also needs our found names, which we have here, which is our found names list. So I'm going to pass, here, pass it here. And the print search results just prints out data for us. So let's try this out and see what happens, see if it works out. So run the program and please enter the first name to search for. You can see it's working. I'm going to enter boy1 just to test out and hit enter. And it says please enter the, the next name to search for negative 1 to continue. I'm going to enter negative 1 which means I'm done. I'm going to hit enter. Now it says boy1 was found, which is true. In the boy and the boy's name the txt boy one is, is in there. Let's try the girl's file. I'm going to type in girl one. We know there is a girl one in the girl's name file. 
So hit enter. I'm going to hit negative one to, to, to tell the program that I'm done. And it says girl one was found. All right, so let's try a name that is not in the boys one, boy one. Now, before that, let's actually try two names, two names. So I'm going to type in boy one for the first name. And then boy, actually let's try girl one for the second name. Okay, so it keeps, it's going to keep on asking us until we type in negative one. So I'm going to type in negative one to show that I'm done. I typed in two names, hit enter. Now it says boy one was found, girl one was found. So let's try something that is not in there. Run the program. First, I'm going to type in boy one. Second, I'm going to type in girl one. Third, I'm going to type in boy six. And then next, I'm going to type in boy, sorry, girl nine. We know boy six doesn't exist in here. And we know girl nine doesn't exist in here. So let's see what happens. Hit enter. I'm going to type in negative one to show I'm done. Now it says boy one was found, girl one was found, boy six was not found, girl nine was not found. So this program is working. It's actually working. Let's actually try a bit more intense. Let's see program search. Let's try that. All right. So boy one. Actually, let's start from. We're going to start from boy ten. So boy ten. Boy nine. All the way to boy one. Let's just type boy. I know it's not in there. Next, I'm going to type in go one all the way to go ten. All right, so we know what's in the file and what's not in the file. So let's just hit enter. I'm going to type in negative one to show I'm done. <coughs> hit enter. All right, so let's see. So it says boy 10. Let's just these ones. Boy 10 was not found, which is true. Boy 9 was not found, but 8 was not. So boy 5 to boy 1 was found. Boy was not found, that's true. Girl 1 all the way to girl 5 was found. And then girl. I mean, basically, we're found. And then girl 6 to girl 10, okay, we can see we're not found. And we can actually compare here. The next is just, um, you know, some formatting, just ma making sure that white space is in there. So we have our questions here, and before it displays our results, we can have a white space in here. All right, so right after um, displaying our questions, basically right after the while loop, in our get user search names function, right after the while loop, when it's done, printing uh, or asking the user all these questions, we can actually call the print function to create a new line character. So when you call a print function and you pass in something, it's going to print that something. Let's just, just try it so you see. I'm going to type in the name boy1, hit enter, negative one, it says boy1 was found. But you see, it printed out whatever I, I told you to print. It's going to print it out and it's going to end that with a new line character. What it means is it's going to print whatever, whatever whatever you told it to print, and it's going to move the position from the end of that line to the next line. And then anything that comes after that, after what you just told it to print, will be displayed from the next line going. So the print function, that's how it works by default. It prints whatever you told it to print and moves the position from the end of the, the line to the next line. Anything that comes after that will be displayed from the next line going. The print function by default ends with a new line character. All right, so if you call the print function, and you pass in nothing. You are printing not this, you're printing out nothing. You're still printing something, that something happens to be nothing. You're printing out nothing on this line. And we know the new line, the print function, we know the print function always ends with a new line character. So after printing out nothing on this line here will be empty. It's going to move the position from the end of this line to the next line. And anything that comes after that nothing you just printed is going to be displayed from the next line going. So by calling the print function, passing in nothing in there, you are basically creating an empty line. All right, so when I run this program, type in go 19, hit enter, type in negative 1 to signify that I'm done, hit enter. We have our white space, and it says go 19 was not found. All right, so this is just some formatting just to make your program look nice. All right, so we are done. Um, if you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them, as always.
Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with the next program. All right, then. Bye-bye.